Hi everyone and welcome to episode 25 of Teach Tech Play. I'm Eleni Karitsas and I'm your host. Tonight we have a really exciting show with some fantastic educators from around Australia. First of all, before we kick off tonight's show, I just want to congratulate last month's episode winner. Um, we had an Aussie Phys Ed edition special and our winner was Shannon Cameron. So well done to Shannon. Girl Power took over all the boys. I know it was a very fun episode of PE Educators. Um, I didn't stop laughing, I think, the whole time. So it was great to have you guys on board and we hope to see you guys soon. But tonight we do have some great educators, a lot of Brisbane people, Brisbane and Melbourne tonight. So we will be sharing a range of things. But before we get started, just a little reminder um, to join us to make sure that you vote for your favourite um, presenter tonight so voting is open now you can also find this on our website and the link will be open till Friday at 8 p.m. also a reminder that all the tools shared on tonight's show we'll be having a Twitter conversation next week so that's Monday the 10th of October at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time so make sure that you join us for that to discuss everything shown on tonight's show the other thing I just wanted to touch base with with everyone was the Teach Tech Play Conference. So we were lucky enough to launch this last month on our episode and it is going to be at Ivanhoe Grammar again next year. The dates for that are April 3rd and 4th. So it is the Monday, Tuesday. They are the first Monday, Tuesday of the Easter holidays for Victoria. Um, so make sure that you block those dates at in your calendar and join us for a bit of fun. Um, all organisers are currently full-time in the classroom, so it is really a conference designed by teachers for teachers. The amount of time and effort that we all put in is quite phenomenal and our keynote speakers are Ewan McIntosh, Matt Miller and John Burgess. So you can find out more on our website and where to purchase tickets and we have got a fantastic lineup of presenters up there for you to have a look at. Also on our website, make sure you do check out our community page. We um, have a whole range of educators from around the world um, who we love to showcase and share what their vision and idea of education is. So make sure you go and have a look and see all the educators and try to connect with some of them. They're all out there willing to help you and that's what Teach Tech Play is. It's about bringing community together. So um, make sure you do check that out. Now, before we jump over to introducing our presenters, I do have a little bit of sad news. Um, late last term, Nathan Jones, who is a great friend of the show, sadly passed away with his battle um, with cancer. Um, he was really close to us. Without Nathan, I don't think Teach Tech Play Conference could have happened. Uh, he had a massive input behind the scenes and I know that any chance he had, he would be willing to help out a whole range of educators from around Australia. So he was absolutely fantastic and someone who inspired us. And whenever I called him with an idea, he always encouraged me to go and do it. And when I told him about Teach Tech Play Conference, he was like, I am with you all the way, let's do it. And he had our backs a whole the whole time. So it was a very sad and tragic loss, but I think for us, um, Nathan will always be part of Teach Tech Play and yeah we just wanted to acknowledge that um, today we had him on the show a range of times sharing everything from spheros to um, augmented reality and every other little thing and I know I shared a couple months ago um, about Sphero Olympics and that was what he created and um, at his funeral they shared a quote which I just want to share with all of you which really shows the type of person who Nathan was and a lot of people would not have even been aware of how sick he was um, and you know when something bad happens you have three choices you can either let it define you let it destroy you or you can let it strengthen you and I know Nathan loved his bike ride and um, we remember him in tonight's episode so um, hopefully those who knew him will remember and cherish the moments we had with him um, so Anyway, I got through that. So the next part of tonight's show is to introduce everyone. Now, I know Riss is having a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, hopefully, she'll be there soon. But um, we'll kick off with Steve. Do you want to just say hello to everyone? Sorry, I forgot to uh, say hi to you. 
Oh, that's okay. I've forgotten down here. Um, first of all, evening, everybody. And Eleni, can I just say that you just you managed to get through it, so thumbs up for that. But Nathan was a special part of the community and he was, his influence has touched so many people and will continue. So um, for those of you who are out there, if you... You know, you think of the times when life gets in the way. Um, there are people out there who are facing tougher things and he was somebody who could carry himself and do it with dignity. He never let on that he was, was suffering and there's a lot that we can learn from it. So for those out there, this sort of episode is dedicated to Nathan, but his work is going to continue on. Um, so tonight's show is going to, um, yeah, it'll be an inspiring you know, evening. Yeah, thank you, Steve. And yeah, that's what Nathan was about. And I was actually privileged to present with him earlier last term when I know things weren't going well for him, but he didn't let that stop him. And he's like, I'm not letting you down. I'll do it. And and he wasn't well, but he still came in and we did it together. And that's the type of person he was. He wouldn't be someone who would let it define who he was. He just kept going with it. So it is a sad loss, but we should all grow and learn from it and cherish those moments. And as he always said, hug your loved ones because that's the thing that we cherish the most. So, Riz, good to see you joining us. <laughs> but we'll jump hey. to Do you want to introduce yourself since you're now here? Uh, sorry, I think the problem was that in this setup, Eleni said to us that uh, everything was going very smoothly and we didn't have, seem to have any issues. And I swear, as soon as you finish that sentence, my laptop rebooted itself just out of totally out of the blue. It's never done it before. So thanks. I think that's your fault. Sorry. Uh, so anyway, I'm Narissa Lang and I'm uh, principal at Campbell's Creek in Guildford Primary Schools in Castlemaine, Victoria. Thank you, Riz, and we are delighted to have you on the show. I know that we've had you present at the conference and you'll be there again next year, which is fantastic. So um, double principal, not just one but two schools, which is fantastic. <laughs> next we'll have Travis. Could you want to introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and what you do? Uh, thank you for having me, Teach Tech Play. Uh, my name's Travis Galter. I'm head of junior school at Ormiston College and I'm, yeah, really privileged to be part of this extra special episode of uh, Teach Tech Play tonight. Thanks, Travis. And I, I was lucky to meet you at our conference this year and you're a bundle of joy up there in um, <laughs> Queensland and I think your display picture shows that. So thank oh, you for yes. joining <laughs> us tonight. We love having you here. And lucky last from... Queensland again. We've got Jacques. Hi everyone, Jacques here from Maryborough, Queensland, just a few hours north of Brisbane. Uh, I'm the head of humanities and business at Riverside Christian College, and I'm looking forward to tonight. It's going to be lots of fun. Beautiful. And I had the privilege of meeting Jacques at the Google Teacher Academy a couple of years ago. It's scary to think that it was two years ago. Um, and we are excited to have you all on tonight's show. So to kick off tonight's show, Narissa will be going first, so hopefully no more crashes. Then we'll have Steve, Travis, myself and Jacques. So we'll get started. Let me know, um, Riss, when you're ready and I'll start the timer. Thank you. I'm on my husband's laptop. Thank goodness for Google because I've just signed into Chrome with, and every, all of my stuff's come up. So hopefully it works. I'll see Perfect. Okay. I just went running into the lounge room. Quick, I need a laptop. <laughs> all right. Uh, is that up on the screen? Yep. Perfect. Fabulous. So tonight, oh, you can. See, I'm happy for you to start the timer. Uh, I am showing Google's CS First tonight, and uh, CS First is a uh, pretty much almost a walk yourself through program to teach kids about computer science. Um, it's completely free, which I absolutely love being a public school teacher. Uh, and it pretty much, it, if you don't know anything about how to teach kids to code um, or anything about computer science, uh, all you need to do is sign up to this website and it will, it has every single tool you could possibly need to teach the students. So um, there's an access or there's information for teachers and students on the website, just cs-first.com. Uh, so basically what they do is they have uh, clubs. Uh, so they say that um, the club can be run by a teacher or a volunteer that comes into the school and they have themes for their clubs. So you can see the themes on the right hand side. So they have animation, which is in beta mode at the moment, arts, um, fashion. And the one that I have, we've used at our school is the game design one. Uh, so basically, once you sign up, then 
you can say how many students you would like to have in your club. And um, I've just set up a little mock club here so you can see what happens. It literally takes less than 10 minutes to set up a club. Uh, so I've selected game design. You uh, put a schedule in there. You can change the schedule. So I've just said that this that um, will be used, my students will be using this club uh, every Monday for eight weeks. Uh, so each of the um, activities, each of the themes has eight have eight activities, uh, and each activity go lasts for between sixty to seventy five minutes. And there's a little uh, pro forma for how they run through the activities. So the materials, this is it pretty much, it literally tells you exactly what to say to the students. So you can have a look on here. There's just a little example here. So this is if you were doing gaming activity one for gaming. So it um, just tells you, gives you an agenda summary, go down here. Here's all the things that you need to do before the students walk into your room. Uh, and then once they're in your room, this is, these, this is exactly what you need to say. Literally, hello and welcome to CS First. <laughs> Um, you, or you can say whatever you like. That's just a suggestion. And then they, you introduce uh, computer science because it's the very first lesson of this theme. Uh, and they actually give you the words to say there. Uh, and then the students on this want the students log into their section with the co their code, um, and they will step through. Oh, sorry, my because my computer shut down. I had it open before, but they step through uh, the activities, and you can. It might be done here now. So they they go through exactly what their activities are, and um, so they'll have a little number one button down the bottom, and a little video plays, and it might introduce uh, the concept that they're learning about for that day. Um, one and minute. Then, oh, sorry. And then the um, and then they they watch that little video, and then they go to step two once they've understood the video or once they feel confident with that, and they move on to step two, and step two will have them go to scratch and actually create a piece of code. Um, and it's so fantastic because it relates it to real life. Uh, so they often refer to other activities and games the kids have used. And at the end, they do what, what's called a wrap up. So they watch a little video and it might outline how computer science leads to a future, could lead to a future career path, or um, it'll do a little test on them to see their knowledge, how much knowledge they gained from that session. Um, and then they just step through to um, the next lot of activities. It's absolutely amazing. And the knowledge that my kids gained, oh, here you go, example project. Um, was far superior to when we taught them scratch ourselves. So they they knew a lot more than when we taught it ourselves. So I'd highly recommend CS first. The end. Perfect timing. <laughs> Great. Thank you. No, thank you for sharing that. I know I'd heard of um, Google CS, but I first, but I hadn't actually jumped in and explored it just yet. So. It's good to know how easy it is to set up and I assume like most Google things, it is free. Oh, it's so free. <laughs> that's why Perfect. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. I think that's a big key point. Has anyone else been using it or any questions for Riz? Um, I might have missed it, Eleni, uh, at the start, but do the students create their own profile or how does that oh, work? So you uh, can... The yeah. yeah, when you set up the club, you say how many students you'll have in your club and then you get a yep. club code. So when the students log on, you'll tell them that they need to type in co whatever okay. the code is for your club. Great. Yeah. And Excellent. so you can run as many clubs as you like at the one time. So you might have five different clubs running. You might have one club doing friends, one club doing sports, one club doing game design. Mm. Excellent, yeah. Because, yeah, we have got a co-club running at our school in our junior school, so always looking for new ideas and that's great. Uh, um, and it's recommended for years, uh, for age levels 9 to 14. So we've had our year oh. fours doing it and their, oh. their, yeah, their knowledge level is outstanding. Rissa, it, it, I saw the example of Scratch on there. What are some of the other um, platforms that it uses? Oh, I think it's only Scratch. That's all I've seen so far. We've only done the game design one, yeah. Cool. Perfect. Thank you, Riss. It's always great to see what other tools are out there for coding. It's always interesting and especially I know a lot of people are using Scratch but a lot of them get into it and go, whoa, I don't know what's going on here and it's quite overwhelming especially if you're not mm -hmm. used to that coding. So something that takes the students step by step is always great. Next up we've got Steve. So Steve, I forgot what you're presenting. but uh, I'm going to be talking about flow state. So 
I'm going to ask Perfect. a question. Let me know when you want me to start your timer. You can start it now because mine's going to be short and sweet. Hands up who struggles with sitting down to write like maybe policies or you've got to prepare some, a document and you sit and go, oh, I don't want to sit and write this thing. So we all face those pressures and every, all their hands up. So I was looking for something that would basically force me to sit down and write. Now, I found this and it's called Flow State. So I'm going to just share my screen. Flow State is a Mac app and an iPad app at the moment. But basically it works like this, is that I'm going to click. So I've got my options here. So you've seen that I've written a couple of blog posts. I wrote four blog posts in three days using this. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and go back a little bit. And you'll see this little voodoo symbol in the middle. If I click on this, I can select from a time. So at the moment I've got five minutes selected. So I can select from a range of time. So I might want to write for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15. Uh, I tend to go with five because I'm not as game. And then I can select a font. So it's really minimalist. And then as soon, and I'll call this Teach Tech Play. Spell. And then when I press enter, I get taken to a very minimal text editor. Now, the difference between this and anything else, you'll notice in the top right-hand corner there's a time limit. If I start typing and I stop, all of a sudden, my words disappear. So what I have found is that I have to keep on typing. Otherwise, all of my work keeps going. And the great thing about this is at the end of five minutes, you have managed to do a brain dump that you just start keep going. So as soon as my five minutes is up, and I'll just show you a previous example. Say, let me look at the one, I wrote this one the other day. So I just sat down and I literally wrote this all, not in five minutes, um, but I prepared some notes and I just sat down and wrote. At the end, I can export it to anywhere. So for on a Mac app, I, I just basically copied the text and, and threw it into WordPress. Uh, on the iPad, you can export it to anything. You can put it into pages. You can export it to Word. But if you are looking for something to just get you to write, the pressure of having it delete keeps you writing. So with a little bit of prep beforehand and a time limit, it really helps to keep you on task. So. I'm using this to write policies at the moment and I am slowly burning my way through them. So that's me done. Oh, a minute to spare. Well, oh, done. well done. Now, I, I can already see a way I could use that in my own classroom. Um, the simple thing that I have a student who um, plans out their writing, has it already, but then when it actually comes to writing it, they rather fiddle, muck around, do everything else under the sun. So I think I might be trying that and say, right, you've got five minutes, show me what you can do. Do you um, know the hardest part is don't sit down with a coffee to do it because you type, <laughs> oh, you have to have a sip of coffee. And it, yeah, I've spilled coffee on my computer a couple of times. So <laughs> that's one thing I would recommend not doing. Yeah, I might have to try it for a few blog posts. Has anyone else got any questions or queries? Um, I, was, so I was just Steve, wondering, do you lose? Oh, you I was just wondering, do you lose? So, do you lose all of the work that when you've, if you've, gone. you know, gone? Wow. Gone. Okay. So you learn. That was my question too. <laughs> you, like what I do is I press like you know one key and then I just delete mm. all that text if I'm sort of thinking. But what it started uh, to get me to do is to just go. All right. I write some notes in a notebook and I have that prepared mm. and then I start and then I sort of will type those notes out or I might go back and edit. But because I only put five minutes on the clock, you're, it's really surprising. You're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing it now, so I might as well just keep on doing it. So mm. I haven't moved past the five-minute timeline because I'm really <laughs> afraid of losing all my work. <laughs> yeah, I would be too. I've used the Pomodoro um, Google extension, but that, that just stops you from going to other websites, but I've never used, like, it, that doesn't erase your work or anything if you haven't paid attention. So I like that one. <laughs> yeah, and their apps, they've got, a, if you go to their, it's, I think Hale Overman is the company that does it. 
they say they're the most dangerous apps on the planet. So they've got a couple coming down the, the pipeline that basically just lock down your computer so that you focus your work. So if you're like me and tend to procrastinate and you have to find these things to force you, I can't recommend it enough. Thank you. And Trav, you had a question? I oh, know it was the same question as Riz about that fear factor of your work just disappearing. I would just keep, keep hitting random keys and just be like, ah, ah hurry up time. <laughs> Um, thank you, Steve, for sharing that. Next up, we've got Travis, who will be sharing oh, okay. focusing on positive behaviour with Red Critter, which I'm excited to hear about. So when you're ready, let me know and I'll start the timer. All right, let's dance. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. Now, um, basically to give you some context, uh, about a year or two ago, I was uh, looking for a tool to use in our junior school to just get some consistency with our positive behavior. And um, the company Red Critter based in the States was over for Edutech and um, our Dean of eLearning, Tamara Sullivan, put me in touch with the developers. And from there, uh, we've gone on and we're using Red Critter uh, from years three to six. Basically, the students create a profile and then you've got a class dashboard. So I'm just in here in a demo class. What I really love about Red Critter is how we can customize it and also, um, yeah, just the consistency it provides us. So here's basically a rundown. Um, and it, I guess also it uses an element of gamification. So you have actions. So here uh, we've got our habits of mind and that uh, action. So you can just award students uh, action points. So say, Cecilia here. Okay, uh, if I award her uh, giving effort, um, you can just award her the points for giving effort in the class and she receives that to her profile. Um, those actions then go along and unlock badges. So for example, I'll just pull up this PDF here. Um, so for example, uh, hard work, when you get earn 50 or more giving effort points, you unlock the hard work badge. I found our students were starting to earn these badges, so I've uh, created different levels. So there's um, uh, beginner level, master level, and legendary level. So it goes 50, 150, 300 points. So the students can work through uh, those levels as well. We've then taken it to, um, I guess, the next level where we're getting uh, co-curricular badges. So as you see there, art club, chess, choir, co-club, etc. The students can now track their co-curricular activities they're in, and also the teachers uh, as well can look at that. What our students really like also is the rewards. So uh, they can earn reward points. I've actually worked with Red Critter, so whenever you assign an action point, uh, you can choose to make it a reward point as well. And then you can have a class reward system where the students basically do online shopping and they use their reward points to um, purchase things. So say like buddy time, uh, our kids love reading, so uh, free reading time, etc. they can use to uh, yeah purchase rewards. And you can just set that up to suit your class. So I guess the benefits are there's some consistency across our years three to six, but then also the teachers can add their own little slant through their rewards, add their own badges and uh, actions as well. Something we're looking at using, uh, let's say Brian here, uh, is what they call um, dailies. So you'll see down here, send as daily. So rather than the teacher assigning that giving effort, it'll actually send an email to Brian's parents. And they, get an, oh, and they get an email and then they can go, yes, he's um, taught me how to find the perimeter of the square or no, he hasn't and give some feedback. So getting that, strengthening that parent partnership. I'll also quickly show you a few tools. Uh, if I just minimize this, we've also linked it in with our house system. So when our students now uh, earn a, a reward point for themselves, they also earn it for their house. And we've got this, what you're seeing on screen now, running in our in our junior admin. So it's really got kids talking about it, going, oh, look at my house. We need to get more people doing this, that. And at the end of the week, we have house of the week. And you can see there, Wiccan was the house of the week before the holidays. Um, I'll, I'll reset the points for the start of the term. Also something uh, new coming through is I'm working with them with their dashboards. So creating some other visuals as well. So you can set some different goals. These are dash, uh, things that can play in the junior admin and you can set it to, um, yeah, basically show a range of things. Oh, so much I want to tell you. Okay. Is that time, Eleni? It is. You can wrap it up if you want. What were you about to say? 
<laughs> oh, I was just going to say, yeah, so like you can see that I, I really like this engagement. Uh, you, so you can see uh, there how many students were engaged in year three to six with recruiter, 96%. Uh, that actually parent engagement's not correct at the moment, but that's 80%. Also, what I like is that because it's raining in Brisbane, you can tie it into your weather. How cool is that? You put in your, your city or your town and then it ties in. Those little things make the difference, don't they? They definitely do. Thank you for sharing that. I had never heard of Red Critter ever. So um, it's always good to see a different reward system. I know that a lot of people are always looking for something um, that they can provide that positive feedback. And I love the parent, how quick and easy it is. And I also like how it links to the house points. That's really, yeah. really cool. Yeah. So do you the, have that on a board or something in the office? Yeah, the so I've, oh, I've got a screen that sits in our junior reception and it ha just has that playing up the whole time. So parents come in and go, oh, labour, or the teachers talk about it. I always grab a and go, oh, come on, what's happening in Wickham? Uh, but I didn't realise in the States, house they don't have house systems. So I was trying to tell them how valuable having a house system was and how we basically use it all the time. So to have Red Critter now... Yeah, aligning with that it's yeah a major buy-in for our teachers because they were having their house point system going and then they're having their class rewards and other rewards to be able to sync it all in one it's just made their i guess their work balance better. is there a cost yeah there look i'm not a salesperson for red critter so look we came on like we're the first school in australia to get on board uh but when I was actually presenting at Teach Tech Play, uh, some of the people jumped on to see because I said, oh, I actually can't tell you what that exact cost is. It's minimal. I think it's like five bucks a month for your class, I think. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Okay. Uh, but if you go to, I think you'll throw up the link, maybe Eleni after and, yeah, um, yeah if you you can check I'm it sure out. I'm sure yeah. will throw it up his yeah. with it at the moment. So, yeah. yeah. So Perfect. Thank you for sharing. Did anyone else have any questions? Yeah, Trav, I'm, I'm always really excited to hear companies like being receptive to feedback on, on improvements to their product. Uh, uh, Red, it seems like Red Credit are pretty open to that. Yeah, they have been really open. Um, and that's what I found really valuable working with them because, look, I rolled it out going, hey, let's see how this goes with our, with our teachers and, and with our students. I was getting feedback. Teachers are like, oh, I don't like how I have to award action points and then reward award reward points would it be able to sync them and so therefore you can just click a little box now and make it that's one example like I was working really hard it took me about six months saying hey if you can do this house point system it'll really help and they finally got on board and they love it now as well I should mention there's also an app on the phone so I've just I walk through the playground and I go oh Steve love how you're getting along there I'm gonna send you 10 getting along points or, oh, you're playing by the rules, Eleni. There you go. And I've just got the app. You can also use QR code. So you can, I know uh, some of our classes, they just have their QR code on the desk and the teacher just uses their phone and boom, and awards their points straight away. So that's a Beautiful. another little tool. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. That's next all right. Up, I can breathe now. Next up is me. So... I'll just share my screen and I will get started. So I'm actually going to be sharing with everybody today um, building global connections in the classroom. So this is actually my learning goal for the year. So I actually shared this with my staff today on our first day back. We had a sort of a little teach meet, so I've got to make it shorter. So um, the reason I chose this was last year I found when we were doing our exhibition, we asked our students to draw a map of the world and they had no sense of where places were. And that really concerned me, especially when part of my teaching philosophy is um, 21st century space is being flexible and allowing to flatten the learning and share learning. So I was a bit worried. And also being a year six teacher, I found that social media and students' knowledge of how much as soon as you share something, Something online how far it can get so I started off with using Google Forms in one of our maths units with data and so the students created the form I shared it out on Twitter and within a week we had over a thousand responses to our survey this was really great as it gave the students a real perception of where people 
were um, from and what they thought of their questions. It also, it, they also learned about their questionings that they were asking in surveys. But the reason I did it as well was to get that global perspective. Then using Google My Maps, we mapped out and could see all the countries that our map had reached, our survey, sorry, had reached. The next step to that was I started our Mystery Hangouts and Skype and we connected with classes where we would have the Mystery Hangout and Skype and I'm pretty sure I've shared it before where you call up a school, you ask questions and you find out where they are in the world. These generally go for about 30 minutes. If you are interested this term, let me know, just send me a message on Twitter, would love to lock it in. Thursdays I have no specialists so let me know a time and we will lock it in. Um, my students are dying because last term we had X, uh, we had musical so we didn't get to do it um, but also Sphere of Art was the next thing and I actually have Nathan to thank for this he got me on board in Sphere of Art and I introduced Sphere of Art where you get your Sphere and your students get paint and they um, mess it all up and I know Nathan said to me make sure you put down some sort of paper underneath it because it goes everywhere and I'm so glad he told me that because I would have had paint all over my room also create a little border around your art piece um, but the kids absolutely love it then one of my students said are we the only class doing this and I said no I'm pretty sure other schools right around the world are doing this I said oh this is great how can we find out so it actually came from them to start Sphere Art Exhibition. So we created this online exhibition to see what others were doing with Sphere Art. So here you'll see we have got students from all around the world sharing their Sphere Art. So if you have done Sphere Art, please share it with us. There are videos and everything there. It is really exciting. And so, and I also thank Nathan for that because he sort of helped me get that going. But then the next step, I connected with a teacher in Germany um, via Google Plus and Twitter and he had a scrapbook project where he sends a scrapbook around the world and everyone adds to it and his class they're learning English and different languages they sort of analyze it and I thought this is really cool especially for our exhibition that we're having this term it would be great to we're doing where we are in place and time as our theme and I thought you know what it would be great to see where all these other schools are currently in place and time and what it means to them so I created the global scrapbook project I did think about sending one out but then when I looked at the dates I figured it wouldn't work with most schools on holidays during the June July period so we created a virtual one so I had the students create a picture and created this slide now this isn't going so well so that's why I'm sharing it tonight because I'm hoping in the next two weeks to have this a few more schools participate where you all you need to do is two slides so we've got our example our explanation of who we are what we do and all you need to do is add your information what school you're from and a picture that represents you so things about where you're from it doesn't matter what grade you were at the start I said grade six but at the moment any grade will do and we would love you to participate because my students need a bit of a provocation to get them started on their exhibition process so that's me sort of calling the community, can you help me um, get that project off and running so my students have something. But I think it is important just to connect them and to see how easy it is to reach other places and also learn from other people out there. So there's a few projects there, Skype if you're, or Hangouts, get in contact, art project or um, scrapbooks. So yeah, any questions? No. That was a shameless Not a question. Just comment. On it. <laughs> <laughs> I need help from my students. It's all for my students. I didn't plug any products. It was just no. my idea. Um, with I'm really interested in the with the Sphero Ars. What is there any special apps that you have to use? What's the setup if you don't know anything about Sphero Ars? So there are instructions on the Sphere of Art slideshow. So everything has instructions. Um, we use the Draw and Drive, Draw, Drive, Drive and Draw app. Um, that's the one that Nathan sort of suggested for me to do. And you could draw a picture and it follows on the thing. So oh. it's not 100% accurate. The kids would do it and it would just go everywhere. Like this isn't working. But it takes a bit of trial and error. I've seen other people put, um, paint down and then get the ball or the sphere and just move it over the top we didn't really do too much coding with it but you can obviously we did it as a bit of a 
birthday celebration, um, we don't have special treats for birthdays, so we think of other things to do. So I did it as a bit of a fun birthday celebration and then it came from the girls to know who else was doing it and they want to see other people's artwork. So that's how we sort of started and it was kid-driven. So, yeah. So, yeah. Next up, we have got Jacques. So Jacques will be sharing with us using social media to role play in history class, which I'm excited to hear about. So let me know when you're ready, Jacques, and I'll start the timer. Okay, is my screen up? Yeah, it's just loading. Yep. Okay, you can start the timer. Perfect. Okay, so, so I've got this old tool that I want to show you how to use in your history classroom. Uh, I use Twitter quite extensively and I thought about trying something different in my senior history class and to bring in a, a role play activity or project with my senior students in ancient history. We were doing a unit on Mesoamerica, looking at the Aztecs and Incas, and specifically looking at the Spanish conquering the Aztecs in the 1500s. So what I came up with was an idea that I got at a teach meet from Simon McKenzie uh, a couple of years ago. And it was acting out about a week or just a slightly over a week's period in history through using Twitter and tweeting out the events. So I started off with just giving them a framework of what we were going to do, how they needed to develop their characters. None of them had ever used Twitter, so I had to go through learning how to use Twitter, setting up their accounts, and then what the timeline was going to be and what the Twitter slow chat was really about. So first up was creating a Google Drive folder with some resources that we could all look at and explore. They had to select a character for themselves. Um, they had to before they even could settle on a character, they had to justify who they wanted it to be and come up with an image for the character and write a few notes. A lot of it involved doing their history research and looking at the primary sources. These are some of the characters that were set up. Um, I ran the main account just to direct some of the conversations and as the events unfolded. Managed to come up with fantastic images and little bios about their characters and what they were going to be doing. And so, over the course of a week, the interaction took place between the students, myself, and we even had external teachers and educators and historians, museum experts tweeting to the students. Um, it took place in October, and you can just have a look through some of these tweets. These are still mine just getting started. And every time they tweeted, done the research about the events taking place and what primary sources they could maybe use, what they needed to investigate, what was happening at that time. So it made the whole unit a lot more engaging for them. Uh, you'll see they started getting a little bit more creative with their tweets as it carried on. They even started getting up to some new, new hashtags. And the conversations didn't just stay in the classroom. I saw them tweeting after school in the evenings, and it was a constant conversation that was taking place on the playground. We One minute. So it, it really was extremely engaging for the students and was just using a social media tool that we all know and that we've all used in the past, but showcasing it with our students how to actually role play an event. And this can be adapted to an English classroom, a novel study, and it doesn't have to be Twitter. It can be actually any tool. Um, I'm planning on using Instagram for a similar activity in the next few months and seeing how that goes, just to experiment with it. But in the end, the kids had fun um, and they still talk about it now because it was such an engaging period of exploring ancient history and exploring these events. And that's it. Perfect. 15 seconds. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's fantastic the way that you have used Twitter with your class, especially being secondary where they are able to get on Twitter and introduce them to a way that isn't through that normal social media 
sort of post your photos, what you're currently doing and actually showing them ways of connecting with experts out there is absolutely fantastic. I wish my students were older. I know we tweet out occasionally, but it's always through my account. So really well done. Did anyone else have any questions or queries? I guess that's yeah, in line. I, I'll let, oh. Go ahead, Trev. In line, I guess, coming from a junior school perspective, but Jacques, was there a bit of educating the parents about the social media element and how it's, you're using it for education? I know uh, at our school, one of our biology teachers does it uh, really well as well, does Twitter and gets in experts and uh, with it, but I think it's about educating the parents and also other teachers that you're just not there tweeting about yeah. what you had for lunch. Yeah, I, I basically sent out a, a letter to the parents and um, and an email or two, but there was never any queries or any problems with it because they, they were aware of what I was already doing with social media in my classroom. And this was just a little extension. The students' identities, they were still protected throughout the whole yeah. period because they set up accounts with a different name. They never shared any personal information. They never um, put anything personal on there. So it was always they were in character for the whole period. Yeah. It was excellent. Yeah. It's great. Thanks. Steve, you had a question? Yeah, uh, two questions, Jacques. Um, yeah. One, did you have to pull any kids into line along the way, you know, when they're hiding behind the, the mask of a character? Did you have to sort of um, have any discussions about social media etiquette? And then the second question is, are any of those kids now on Twitter uh, themselves as themselves? Yes. Okay, so for the first one, there was one student that did act up a little bit, but he was fine once he, he got into his character. He was um, the one of the traders that sold fried chicken. And so he managed to engage with his character because he, he loved being a bit silly and goofy and he could be do that with his tweets. But luckily, I've got really good students that were fantastic. They never got out of line. Um, so he's kind of second, <laughs> Yeah. I think it was uh, Tenochtitlan fried turkey or something. Yeah. <laughs> the one of those students, uh, she is on Twitter. She's actually uh, studying in Canberra, and she is I'm trying to think what she is studying. But she constantly writing and sharing uh, resources to do with writing itself. So at least one of them has managed to stay on Twitter and get connected. Well done, man. That's awesome. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. That's really good. Thank you for sharing. And that actually brings us to the end of tonight's show. But before you all go, the most important thing is not to forget to join us next week for our Twitter conversation. So we'll be discussing everything on that we sh was shared on tonight's show, as well as the most important thing, vote for your favourite presenter. Um, voting can be found on our website under the web show um, tab as well as um, I'm sure it's being tweeted out as I speak. Um, the other thing is don't forget to get in early for our conference next year. There is a fantastic lineup of presenters. Um, there are some fantastic, uh, I just, every time I look at it, I just am in awe with who we've been able to get to be there. So um, absolute fantastic people. And I know there are some exciting things to come that we still have to announce. So keep your ears open and keep following tt play hashtag and for any other information make sure you check out our website um took us a while to build it um and we are very proud of it and especially the community page reach out to people you might find something in common with someone else um thing about us is we're all here to help each other and we're all here to learn from each other so None of us are more superior than another one. We are all classroom teachers and we all learn and share together. So um, on behalf of myself and the team, thank you for joining us tonight and we hope to see you next month for our 26th episode of Teach Tech Play, which will air on Monday the 7th of November at 8pm. And um, hopefully we also get to see you at the conference in April. So thanks everyone and um, we'll see you all soon. Bye.